Hello everyone. In the last lecture we talked about power factor correction and that it was equal to KD times K theta. KDD was the distortion factor and then K theta was the displacement factor. We saw that when we have a pure sinusoidal the distortion factor would be 1 and uh, the power factor would be equal to only k theta which is the displacement factor and the displacement factor is basically just the cosine of the phase difference between the voltage and the fundamental component of the current now in this lecture we're going to ex uh, introduce another uh, topic which is the total harmonic distortion for short THD and it's another measure another type of measure of distortion and its formula is THD equal to to infinity So it can be written as um, basically IRMS divided by I1, which is the fundamental, com the RMS of the fundamental component, to the power of 2 minus 1, as we have here. And so if you recall, I1 of RMS divided by IRMS is equal to KD, which is a distortion factor. So if you want to find KD from THD, it's 1 over 1 plus THD to the power of 2. If we just put KD here, then, then we, we, we will e end up with this example here. So let's do an example. Find THD and KD. For the following waveform. Okay, so now let's say if we had the current being a square wave, basically. So this is I m. So the Fourier series of this waveform I can be written as I equals four I M divided by pi six of N one V to infinity so the odd numbers only 
1 over n sine of nt. These are the coefficients. of the nth harmonics r i n equals 4 i n divided by n pi so its rms would be i n rms would be 2 root square of 2 i n divided by n pi And I know that the RMS current of a square wave voltage is just this maximum here. So that's I am. So let's go ahead and try to find the THD. So THD from what we explained above can be found from I RMS divided by I. 1 of RMS to the power of 2 minus 1. Okay, so this would be equal to root square of IRMS. From up here, we know it's equal to I of M divided by I1 of RMS, which is 2 root square of 2 I M divided by n pi which is here n is 1 to the power of 2 minus 1 we'll have root square of pi divided by 2 root square of 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 which equals 0 0.48 so that's our THD and if you want to find KD, KD was equal to 1 over 1 plus THD to the power of 2. So that's 1 over 1 plus 0 0.48 to the power of 2, which gives us about 0 0.9. And this is our distortion factor. Now, since in I am, yeah, so that's, um, I guess this is, good enough because we wanted to touch on the total harmonic distortion and leave the example for power factor for later on um, okay so now let's do another example for um, power factor correction but not related to the total harmonic anymore Okay, so find the power factor in. Okay, so let's have an RL circuit. So let's say this is V, uh, capital V of S, cosine of omega T. And we feed that into an inductor and a resistor. Okay, so this is L. R. This is I. Okay, so because this is uh, the current here is 
sinusoidal and it doesn't have any distortions so our k of d would be i one of rms divided by i rms they would be equal and it would be equal to one so our power factor here would actually be equal to k theta which is the average power divided by uh, vrms irms and here the average power is going to be vrms irms cosine of phi divided by vrms irms and we're left with the cosine of the power angle so theta here is the power angle where when phi is negative it's leading and when phi is negative it's leading and it is a capacitive circuit and when phi is positive it's lagging where we have an inductive circuit so here we have an inductive circuit and uh, phi is actually <coughs> lagging so our power factor would be equal to cosine of phi And phi would be if we had the also the angle of our z. So z would be r plus j l omega. So if this was so if this was r, and this is l omega j l omega. And this is going to be a root square of r square plus l2 omega 2. So here we would have our angle phi. So as you can see, if this angle phi is 0, then cosine of phi would be 0 and our power factor would be at its maximum, which is 1. As And as we add inductance, and as the inductance goes high, so the... Uh, power angle also increases and cosine of phi decreases from 1 to a lower value of 1 so uh, as we as we introduce inductance the power factor would decrease another way to look at this would be to say s equals p plus jq and then tangent of phi would be equal to q which is the reactive power divided by p the reactive power is due to our inductance again so the presence of that inductance uh, creates our a reactive power and then divided by the real power would be the tangent of phi now if we were to uh, wanted to increase the power factor in this circuit what can we do so if we had L and R. So one thing that we could do is to make Q zero. All right, how do we make Q zero? So if we can make Q zero, phi would also go to zero and then cosine of phi would be one and then our power factor would be one. So that's what we wanted, that's good. So now let's do another example. So before we do the example, let's say actually how we can do that. So in order, so we, if we introduce an inductor, how can we compensate that reactive power from an inductor? By adding a capacitor, right? So we can use a capacitor to cancel out the reactive power produced by the inductor. Okay, so the reactive power produced by L K 
can be compensated by adding a capacitor in parallel. Okay, so inductor, resistor, and then I have a capacitor here. V of that's capital V of M. Cosine of omega t. So now let's find what value of capacitance do we need in order to do that. So we now that know that S is equal to P plus JQ and then P plus JQ not let's call it prime let's call it and this is due to inductor um, and then this is called due to the capacitor right so maybe let's call it jq and j q L and QC instead. In order to achieve unity power factor, so P dot F is equal to one. the net reactive power has to be zero okay so we need q to be equal to actually jqb to be equal to minus jq JQL to be equal to minus JQC and or just Q to be equal QL to be equal to minus and QL oh, how, how can we find QL? QL is equal to L omega times I RMS to the power of 2 and this equals L omega Vs to the power of 2 divided by uh, root square of 2 to the power of 2 which is 2 and then r squared plus um, L2 omega 2 and what is Qc? Qc is equal to 1 over C omega I R M S. oh sorry V squared, which is V S squared, V S R M S squared divided by C omega, and this equals V S to the power of two divided by two, and then divided by V one divided by C omega, then C omega here. Q is for C, this would be a negative value. So now QL is equal to negative QC. L omega Vs 2 divided by 2 times r squared plus l2 omega 2 
is equal to ust sin over divided by 2. ust omega omega and 2 and 2. Thus c would equal l divided by omega squared l squared plus r squared. Thus thus reactive components can be used to compensate for the displacement factor and by compensating for the displacement factor you can compensate for the power factor as well so if we find um, choose our capacitor to be this value right here then our power factor would be equal to one which we wanted as here 